Hi, my name is Wilson Logan. I am the creator of a program called PG Offline. PG Offline allows you to download all your data from a Yahoo group. When you first start PG Offline, it will ask you for your Yahoo group's username and password. Don't worry, this information is only stored inside PG Offline on your own PC. The second thing we need to do is list which groups we are going to download. I have over 200 groups, so this might take a while for me. Ok, here's my groups. Now I'm going to select two related groups and one with a lot of attachments. So we'll just drag the cursor down here. And I'll add this group, and this group, and this group. Once we've added our groups, we just need to select a group, press start, and the groups, sorry, the messages will start downloading at the bottom of the screen. Ah, there we are. So, PG Offline is made up of four windows. This is the groups list window, the message list window, the message display window, and the status window. So in the status window at the moment, you can see what we've done in the past. You can see that the messages are being downloaded. And in the message dis in the message list window, you can see the messages being brought in. Now, I'm going to press stop at this point because you don't have to get your messages from Yahoo. If somebody in your group has already downloaded the messages, they can produce an archive file with PG Offline and using that archive file you can just download all your messages directly from the archive file. So I've already done that. Here's one I prepared earlier. Import from folder. Browse. There we are. LX200 archive. Open. And in this archive, I have archives of all these three groups. So I'll just pick those and import. OK, that's the import complete. Now we can see that all the messages have been imported. Let's make the message list window a bit larger. Once we've got our messages, what can we do? Well, the first thing we can do is we can resize the columns to suit ourselves. We can also move the columns around. Let's say that I was very interested in the status. I could put the status all the way over here. Um, let's say I'm not interested in the topic ID. I could move that out over there. Um, we could sort on any of these columns. So, for example, I could sort by subject. I could sort by author. I can sort by topic ID. I can sort by anything at all. If you sort by topic ID, one of the nice things you can do is select an entire topic and then show selection as digest. What this does is it shows all the messages in one, effectively one scrolling page. I could also choose to double click on the first message. This shows it full screen and then I just press next through the messages. I can also view the messages in the message display window. So I can pick the first one I want to read and then just press the down arrow. It's probably one of the faster ways to do it. What about searching? Let's make this window a little bigger. Choose LX Turner Classic and search. Let's say we wanted to find all the posts by a particular person. We could just choose one and then 
find and you can see here that we found all the posts in LX200 Classic by John Mahoney. Now we're not limited to searching one group. We bring up the search window again. We can choose another group to search. And now when we look in here we can see that we now have posts from LX200 Classic and LX200 GPS for John Mahoney. Uh, once again we can choose to sort by subject or obviously you don't want to sort by author because it's only the one guy. Sort by subject is probably the smartest thing to do in this situation. You can choose a particular section of messages and show them as a digest. Or you can pick the first one and walk through them. Now you might notice that people sometimes don't trim their messages. We've got an answer for that. If we press the hide button and I do that again, you'll see that the extra text that was at the bottom of the message has now been removed gone. Search obviously has other features. We could choose to search the subject or in the text of the message or in, in a number range from one to say a thousand or let's pick a subject. Let's pick both groups. So we can see pollen's quite an interesting topic for astronomers. Uh, gets on the lenses of their equipment. So if we sort by author, we can then read posts by the same author, for example, Mr. Strait, over multiple groups. So here are answers about pollen from Brian Strait in LX200 GPS and LX200 Classic. What about files I hear you ask? Well, if you want to get your files, choose Group, choose the Files button. It will ask you, do you want to download them? Say yes. Uh, you need to list all the files that are in the group. The reason for listing them is that you might decide you don't want all the files for whatever reason. So you could choose not to take schematics for example. I'll select that. You could choose to take none, select none, or select all. Once you've made your choice, press the download button. Once the files are downloaded, if you press the files button again, you'll be taken to the folder which contains the files you've just downloaded. Photos works exactly the same way. Press the photos button, you'll be asked to download them, list the photos, um, decide which ones you want, press the download button. The same as for files, if you press the photos button now, you'll be taken to the folder which has all your photos in it. Links, same thing, download the links, list them, download, and they're very very fast. Choose links, and you now see a list of the links that you've downloaded. Once you've downloaded your files, photos and links, if at a later date you want to see if there are any new files, photos or links in your group, right click on your group name and choose either download files, photos or links. Don't choose the icons because obviously they'll take you to the folder where your files are. You might remember at the start that I said I'd added a group with attachments. 
if we scroll down a bit, we can see that this group has plenty of attachments. If you want to view attachments, just click on the attachment in the message. double click you can see the whole message full screen and the attachments are available. So this has been a very brisk run through of some of the basic features that are available in PG Offline. There's much much more in it that I will go into in later videos. Thanks for watching.